Welcome, everyone, to District Divided, a D.C. sports podcast, more specifically, a Washington Commanders podcast. I am Amit. That is KDOT. Uh, well, we didn't quite get it done. It was a hell of a lot closer than both KDOT and I thought the Commanders fall to the Philadelphia Eagles 34 to 31 in overtime on the road. We're about to break the game down, get uh, KDOT's thoughts, my own thoughts, etc. Before we begin. If you enjoy the episode, please like the video, please subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, and KDOT, share that shit. Share that shit. And without further ado, let's get into it. So once again, a 34-31 loss to the Philadelphia Eagles in honestly a very close game, a back and forth. It got off to a brilliant start. It was one of the best drives to start a game we've had in quite some time. Mm -hmm. um, then the Eagles score 7-7. Seven, seven. Then we score again. Terry McLaurin recovering a fumble in the end zone for a touchdown. And then a few punts, some field goals, some drama at the end. K-Dot, what'd you make of the game? It's a weird feeling, right? Um, so... The thing with the with an outcome like that, which was unexpected in the sense of how close that game was, it was heartbreaking. It's a it's an emotional roller coaster. And holy shit, I can't believe this is happening. I can't believe this is happening. Oh my god, it's happening. Oh my god, we actually have a legitimate shot at this. To the it it just felt like some skins games and commanders games old and and just the the heartbreaking fashion in which it happens in that Jake Elliott field goal at the end. It's just it's hard to swallow, especially against a division rival that we don't want to see um happy. Right. Um, right. So it's like that one's tough. And I know that right now there's a lot of arguments about certain aspects of the game. Sure. Um but I think that what it is that I think today and looking at Twitter and talking to people there, it's much more of an emotional reaction to what it is that happened mm -hmm. than it is maybe a logical reaction to what it is that happened, if that makes sense. Of so like, course, absolutely. Right? So, yeah, I mean, look, me and you said it. This is this Eagles team is better than us. Jalen Hurts hasn't looked like the monster that he necessarily was last year going in this game. And you know anything can happen in an NFC divisional matchup, but based on what we've seen prior in this in this season itself, we didn't think that we really had a shot at this game. And the fact that is that if you're looking at last week compared to this week, the poise the Sam Howell showed, yeah. the way that Eric Bieniemy, especially on that first row, schemed something where the run and the pass were working symbiotically to make us drive down the field. There were a lot of things in which you could say, "Wow, okay, they responded." better than anyone can really expect after the Buffalo di dismantle it. Right. Right. Um, but then, yeah, there's, there's certain things that, yeah, you, 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 you need to be critical of, and there, there are certain things that you need to be clearly critical of from a logical standpoint, right? The going for, uh, it's the going, the going, uh, the kicking the extra point inside of the two point conversion. I know that's a point of contention for a lot of people. Right. I'll be the first to tell you, I was watching the game with a couple, uh, with a couple guys and, I was for kicking the extra point. Somebody else was for the two point conversion. And another person was just sort of like, eh, he didn't really make his opinion known. I what, think he, won't, he wanted you know to what? see what uh, on that note. Why don't we talk about the two point conversion? Yeah, because um, I was on the side of go for two. Yeah. And so my reasoning for it, and I think a lot of people, and it's it's easy in hindsight, but I know in the moment I was mm -hmm. like screaming go for two. Yeah. Because to me, if you were to boil the game down to what was one of the points we made, one of the very important points of this game was to keep the Eagles offense off the field, right? Yeah. What better way to do it than one play from the two-yard line with no time left and you decide win or loss and you've just gone on a drive and scored yeah. with no time left, right? So like 
all the momentum's there. And by going to overtime, you are creating the possibility for the Eagles offense to come back. Let's say they win the toss and score immediately. Mm -hmm. Now we ended up receiving, but Eagles get a drive and that's it. Right. So that's how it ended up going. I'm honestly surprised considering we have, Riverboat Ron, considering we have Eric Bieniemy, I think back to the Giants Titans game of last season where Brian Dable and that staff made the point week one on the road to Tennessee and go for two. And it works. It doesn't always work, but it worked. And they end up mo- going on a playoff run. They go to Minnesota. They went like that kind of thing can galvanize a team. And I think Sam House showed some serious stones on that last drive in regulation to make those plays is incredible. Um, you were for kicking the extra point. Walk me through your thought process there. We haven't looked good in the short game, especially in Philadelphia in this game. So like in the if you're looking at you talk about the touchdown that Sarah McLaurin has off of a fumble. You talk about the fact that uh, they did this thing twice in the game, which I never want to see it again which is our version of the tush push, which is drop Logan Thomas under center and have him go forward. The first time it took like a third effort to get him any of the yards. Um, and it was more just the way the pile kind of shook out and they didn't blow the play dead. And the second time was an abomination. Um, the idea that this front five against the front four of Philadelphia, knowing that we weren't running the ball necessarily at the high clip that we needed to, uh, even though I do have some criticism of that and we can't get to get into, but the idea that um, driving the ball down the field the way that we were and the way that Philadelphia was playing defense as far as that soft shell is very different than uh, what usually is, is I need two yards, I'm going to punch you in the mouth, go get it. I look at our front five and I look at Jalen Carter and those guys in that defense and say, I straight up don't know if we could do that. Um, sure. So there's also the element of, so the, the other element is something which is like, all right. Then even if you look at like the, uh, the the amount of penalties we had to do to get in situations, or okay, they could possibly roll Sam Howell out, but Sam Howell also got sacked five times today. It wasn't like it was it wasn't perfect, right? Right. The the, I, the idea that like two yards is a gimme, or you, it's a, I don't think anybody's saying it's a gimme. I should say that. No, of course not. But the it's idea, but the idea that what happened in that drive itself would predicate what is going to happen on that two point conversion to me is it, it's one of those things that I don't think the analytics do a great job of showing. I know that there was a guy from PFF that was on Twitter talking about it and the mm-hmm. way that he put it, it sounds so succinct. He's like, I'll never understand people that think uh, going two yards for going two yards for a score is easier than getting a coin toss, getting the ball or stopping them. And then everything it takes to win when it comes to overtime. Mm -hmm. And I understand that if you were to look at that in a vacuum, but what that doesn't take into account is the matchups that you have on offense against the defense. Right. It it, it just doesn't take those things. Or even what Ron Rivera said after the game, um, which was that after that drive, I looked at my guys and they were gassed. They just didn't have it in the tank. Okay. And And that's certainly a possibility. Go ahead. Right. So, so so if you're looking at all those things, like I, I get it. And in hindsight, Hey, we didn't get the win. So you can definitely question it, right? Right. But the idea that even if you're looking at OT, we did win the coin toss. We were driving down the field. There's the Terry McLaurin non-catch that was a catch. I, I think that was just ruling on the field. Was it was a ruling they on the field. If with. they had ruled it the other yeah. way, it would have went that way. It would have stayed, yeah. Right. And shit like that happens over the course of the game. But I, I, I would look at that and say that, holy shit, even the defense having another opportunity. They had a third and seventeen. To get to, to, to right. and if it wasn't for the penalty that Philadelphia then gets as far as the intentional ground that backs them up even further, we had opportunities. And here's the other thing: we're not even in the situation itself if Philadelphia does right and doesn't score. There was they should have ran the clock down. The, the quick score that they had to AJ Brown that actually worked out. Yeah, it yeah. worked out tremendously. And he taunted. Right. I was I was watching the game with Mr. X from our comment, uh, one of our comments, yeah, yeah. and. He's me. I'm like, I'm, I was kind of dejected in the immediate moment. Once again, the emotions aspect of it, he's like, Oh, that's great. That's man. great. Yeah, yeah, like, exactly. I had the same thought. Right. I was like, Oh, they gave us a chance. Like, this should have been over. Yeah. It should have been over, especially with the way DeAndre Swift was running the ball and saying, Like, it should have been over. So, the idea that they even gave us the opportunity to do that, I'm like, I get it. But the biggest thing to me, as far as, um, regardless of the two point conversion, any of this shit is a thing that I know I've been super critical of, and I think I'm going to get more vocal about it. Um, especially post this game, 
Jack Del Rio and the defense needs to be held accountable for some of the shit that's happening right now. Mm. We've given up 30 points three games in a row. Um, this is start with the amount of talent that we have as far as first round picks right. on that defense front. And you look across the league as far as any other team that has that much stock on defense. These are not okay results. And yeah. you can see in the scheming. Look, Emmanuel Forbes, we all know when you have a rookie quarterback, cornerback, they're going to go through the struggles. He had a rough fucking game. And yes, it is a tall task. Devontae Smith, AJ Brown. It is a, it is a good at, it's a big ask, but I got to be critical of what it is that's on the field. And there's, yeah, you you do get you you do get some uh, you you're gonna catch some shit. This well, week. why don't we why don't we go ahead and focus on a couple of the good things too? Because once again, yeah. our expectations for this game were not high. We find ourselves in overtime and with an opportunity to win the game, whether it be the two point conversion that yep. never happened, or it be the drive in overtime, and then the opportunity for the defense to step up one more time. Uh, DeAndre Swift, fourteen carries, fifty six yards. Yes, he did score, but that's four yards a carry. He's been yep. averaging seven, um, four catches 23 yards for deandre swift so we were talking can we even stop it uh, based on the average he did uh then you look at jalen hurts who did have a good day just to be clear 25 at 37 319 two touchdowns did get sacked three times but on the ground nine carries 34 yards a couple of those tush pushes which we'll get to in the comment mailbag uh as well but i think overall that could have that could have also been worse i do want to talk about the defense like you said though because it is unacceptable right so like we stopped the run awesome we got to put it together fully and it is a totally reasonable expectation to have that right to have the amount of talent we have on the front line um on that defensive line jamin davis first round pick emmanuel forbes first round pick cam curl not a first round pick but maybe the best player on defense since Jonathan Allen like there is so much talent on this team and I see stunts run on just about every defensive line and it feels like maybe they are being around I'm just missing them but I, it yeah. feels like they're not there and it's I don't see how these D linemen are getting freed up outside of just maximizing their own talents feels like without a plan uh, what are you what do you make of that i think that's an overall solid narrative for this defense one that i've brought up ad nauseum as far yeah. as them relying on the athleticism um that being said you are right about certain aspects in this game at least early on they were doing a hell of a job as far as qb containment on jalen hurts mm -hmm. there are plays that you can look at that i know chase young was trending in dc because at one point, it looked like he just kind of like Matador, like let A.J. Brown catch <laughs> the ball. Um, and he was way out of position. And it was like, whoa, they dropping Chase back in coverage. And it's like, oh, no, they they were making sure they had someone kind of protecting that area to make sure that they could close in on Jalen Hurts if need be. Mm -hmm. And they did a good job on that for the most part. Now, Benjamin St. Juice had a hell of a play doing it. Uh, I think Davis had a couple good plays doing it. But it was sort of bend, bend until the point of breaking. And then mm -hmm. there, and then it just at the worst possible moments is here's a terrible or Jamin Davis terrible angle on this on this particular tackle. This guy gets this guy gets bond. So yeah, there are a couple things that you can see even scheming wise. They were like, okay, I can actually see it to a certain degree. But then yeah. there are other things that you can see. It's like okay, that third and seventeen for Philly, and where we know in overtime, mm -hmm. and we know hey. They're not trying to score a touchdown. They just need to get in the field goal range, and we're playing 15 yards off the receivers. Right. What is that? Yeah. So like, there it. The, I can look across a lot of defenses in the league. I can look at even as they didn't have a great day. I can look at Cincinnati's defense. I can look at Dallas's defense. I can look at San Francisco's defense and see who. That's a game plan. These dudes mm -hmm. are they doing this? They're doing that. The most I'll say this year, this week is like I could see that he was queuing up the blitz more, or I could see that the QB could say and actually work for a certain degree. But if that's all that I'm noticing, if I'm not noticing the defense gelling a certain way, if I'm not noticing certain guys being, uh, it's just, it's not enough. And once again, even if you look at the stats from DeAndre Swift, even if you want to give them credit for this, that, and the other, Sam Howell did not turn the ball over today. Yeah. And they gave up 30 plus points. Yeah. And so on that good, Sam Howell, 29, 41, 290 yards, a touchdown, the last player regulation, or, you know, at least the first four quarters. 
Um, 76.3 QBR, his passer rating 98.6. Probably what, might have been his best day as a pro, honestly, in terms of just like the environment he went into and standing tall. He did get sacked five more times. He also took some yeah. hits while rushing. So like that is something we're going to continue to monitor. Terry McLaurin, 10 targets, eight catches, 86 yards. Jahan Dotson, four catches, 27 yards, a touchdown, that big touchdown, but nine targets. So like we talked about targeting the wide receivers more because they each had 16. Well, they like doubled that, <laughs> you know, like this, you get the 10 targets, the nine targets. You're in a much, much better space there. I like the offensive game plan. I think it was a good day for the offensive the enemy. Let's uh, talk about how you see this team moving forward. There, there, there's sort of two sides to this coin, right? Like the, you could maybe think of it as a moral victory. You could also go, hey, Amit, no such thing as moral victories. A loss is a loss. We're on the road. Yeah, whatever. Don't care. We're two and two. Um, what do you make of this team moving forward with what you saw? It. Don't know. Um, and I, I don't think anyone quite knows the, the league has been very weird. Today was an extremely weird day. Um, as recording after Sunday night football tonight, you guys watched on Monday, this weekend has been a very weird weekend Mm -hmm. in football. Um, even like we, we got absolutely demolished by the Buffalo bills and they went on to completely demolish fucking Miami who in part demolished Denver 70 points last week. Right. So it's, (laughs) Like, and we barely beat Denver, but then we played Philadelphia in overtime. Like, it's, who knows? <laughs> like, if there's anything, it's it's what you said as far as, like, the offensive game plan. Sam Howell came and showed out compared to what it is he saw last week. He listened. He learned. He didn't make a lot of the same mistakes he did last week. That's something that you could say, good job, bud. Eric right. Biennemi, there were three moments of the game that I thought we got away from the run, but overall – great balanced attack and you got the guys involved as much as you possibly can great job what hell of a way to look at the criticism from last week and improve on them this week right so offensively i'm feeling good about the progression that they're making and i think that they continue to make strides especially against a philadelphia front four or a defense overall that can fucking ball yeah. um so i feel good about that defensively right now i don't know at all what to think about this defense or what it is they're going to be. We do have Chicago, which is great, but they also played in a, like a like death match against fucking uh, Denver today. Yeah. Um, and who's who knows what's what's that supposed to be? Like they came alive. Like you, you don't know. Like you don't know. Like based on this Philadelphia performance, would you expect us to throttle Chicago on Thursday? Maybe. But then at that same point, do we play down and up depending on the team? Oh, yeah. I mean, you see, here's the thing. Based purely on the performance, yeah, you would expect that, right? But it never works that way. And so that's why I think the I don't know is probably the only answer, the only true answer, because when you're not an elite team, it really is week to week. And even for the elite teams, you do have that occasional week to week where it's just a bit nonsensical. Um, And so... We're going to see what ends up happening. I think it's nice to know because it's nice to have a good offense um, and one that I feel that you can have some more confidence in moving forward. That Again, hostile environment. Sam Howell, I think, has been great so far. He had the rough game. We asked, how is he going to respond? Yep. I thought he responded really well, K-Dot. And, and so I think that's something that not not all veterans are capable of doing. And so I think he showed um, for himself very well. And there's a lot of reason for hope at the most important position in sports from there. So 100%. I'd say that- there's the, yeah, he, there were a couple things today that you still see that he's doing that still young quarterbacks would do holding on sure. the ball too long a few times. Uh, one time trying to throw the ball out when he didn't need to do that um, and not sliding when he probably needs to slide. So like there, but there's the things that, okay, all young quarterbacks have to kind of develop and go through. Mm -hmm. Um, but overall he is listening and getting better. And, um, right now we get into a stretch of the season, um, up until uh, others, we get what, uh, Chicago, Atlanta, and New York before we play the Eagles again, these are opportunities for these offense to shine. And And this is where you could find that consistency. So if the offense continues to move at this clip that it's moving at, and that's good. All right, defense, you were supposed to be the linchpin of this team. When are you going to step up? I know it's right. a slow roll every season, 
And that's been very disappointing to me. But when is it going to turn on? Because if the offense is ready and it's here and it's good to go, Lord knows what this town might fucking light itself on fire if the defense can't get right. That's exactly right. And let's jump over to the comment mailbag where we have two comments. Really appreciate both of you. It's Vindo and Ridge, wear your helmet at. So we're going to begin with Vindo, the OG shout out. Um, that damn Eagles foot. I'm assuming he's referring to Jake Elliott there, unless uh, there's somebody else. But it was a 54 yard game winner from Jake Elliott. Um, I was actually talking with a couple guys um, after the game, and we were talking about the the disparity between college kickers and NFL kickers. These NFL kickers these days are just like 54. You feel pretty confident that it's going to end up going in these days. Um, Jake Elliott, props to you. I ended up nailing a 54 yard. But these college kickers, 35. Hey, all bets are off. Who knows what's going to happen with that one? So I actually had an interesting conversation with one of the guys I was watching the game with who was a kicker at uh, in the NCAA or mm-hmm. at, a, at the collegiate level. I know and, who you're talking about. Yeah. He, would, he would, I think he'd have a decent run at the 54 yarder. So that was, he's he, got a leg. His breakdown of me. So there was, there's a viral, there was a video that went barstool or Pat McAfee was at whatever. He's university. offering money for like I random did. kids to kick. And the dude shanked a 33 yarder to the point where it was so bad that they then offered him a million dollars. And he still, and what did he do? He shanked it left and hit a guy in the face that was holding the camera. Um, but I was asking him, like, how did I was like, I don't think I could kick a, kick a 33. He's you like, can. that is so automatic. And yeah. I'm like, it, it sort can. of threw me off a little bit as far as the kicking game today. <laughs> I was watching. Um, and he was also telling me how easy punting is. Oh, also, Tressway, rough day, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, but listen. Tress is allowed one or two of those. Like he's yeah. he's been nothing short of you incredible. Yeah. Um, let's move over to Ridge where your helmet at. Who asks, is this Eagles tush push play truly unstoppable? Our stout D line was helpless against it in OT. How would you draw up a stop? Really appreciate the comment there, Ridge. Um, K dot, I'll, I'll pose the question. The question has been posed already. Uh, is it an unstoppable play? Sort of. It's unstoppable. I hate the play, and I, I've i been very adamant in any podcast I've been on that they need to ban it. It's not football, it's rugby. That being said, this particular team, with the personnel that they have running this particular play, is pretty much unstoppable. Which is why I think you don't ban it, and it's just that they're that good at it, and it feels unfair to the point. It's a compliment to them. That you go, it should be banned. So here's my th- only thing with that. Today, when they did the tush push, I did notice, very egregiously notice, the false starts that they are getting. Yes, I will also agree with you there. Like, if crazy. We, like, look, I have not watched every tush push. I fucking hate seeing it. So I don't know if they're getting that on every play. But in this game, it was egregious. But it, it, that even being said, there were some points where I was looking at our defense and I'm like, Everyone looks like they're over the football. At one point, Deron Payne, like his hand was under the football and his head was over. But it's like, you got to do what you got to do. But it's but if they're going to allow them to do that, yeah, then the onus has to be on the referees to make sure it's as clean as possible. And if, the, if they're getting what felt like a full half a second to a full second head start yeah. on getting the push on before they snap the ball, that's some bullshit. But the only way you can stop this, just to answer the other part of the question, you got Jamin Davis on a running start. He times the snap count perfectly. He grabs Jalen Hurts' head, and he flips it over. It is the only way to stop this play from there, the looks of it, especially if the false starts are going to be allowed, K-Dot. There are halfway there already. Stop, there are two ways to stop this play. Okay. Number one, don't the Coordinators, get- please, please listen right now. Go ahead. Don't get them in short yardage situations. That's just that's probably the best way to do it. Just prevent it all together. And number two, at the league meetings this year, vote it down. <laughs> I'm so, sorry, yeah, I think I enough. think I think the tides are changing on it because I do think that most of the coaches uh, or the the most of the coaches last year probably had your mentality, which is like, oh, well, we we could stop it. We don't want to. No teams better than They have had play. a whole off season like, to figure it out, and it has not been figured it's not out. Not gonna yet. work, guys. I think it's I still think it's personnel, but dude, the, even what they did today, which was the fake tush push rollout, it's like, man, fuck you guys. No, I know. I mean <laughs> they could just run the navy offense, it'd be fine. 
it's just it's, it's, it's such bullshit. But if they're getting it did it does look like they're getting a false start or at least some sort of movement before the snap, and that just makes it supremely unfair. Yeah. Uh, and so and this was the show. Uh before we sign off, uh do want to say we do have a Thursday game coming up this week. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna release the preview episode on Wednesday night so that you can see it, turn right back around and enjoy that game. This was District Divided, DC Sports Podcast, more specifically a Washington Commanders podcast. I am Amit. That is KDOT. That was our breakdown of the game today and expectations moving forward, what we hope to see moving forward. If you enjoyed today's episode, please like the video. Please subscribe to the channel. Hit the notification bell. Comment as you always do. And KDOT? Share that shit. And Wusai, guys. Calm the fuck down. It was Thanks. a good Eagles team. Long, long way to go. And um, whether we should have gone for two or not, beside the point, it's done. We move forward. Chicago on Thursday. Take care. In D.C., we're just hoping that you listen. 